Thank you and good evening. Uh, the board's, you know, we're, this is 10 months in the making, so, uh, you know, like as Mr. Barbieri said, this is not our first meeting, so we're going to be fairly quick with our presentation. Uh, we've actually been spending against this budget since July 1st, and it's, it's time to uh, kind of wrap it up and start thinking about next year. Uh, we did close the books on FY19 in, in mid-August, and that has helped us a little bit, as you're going to hear from Ms. Knuse in a few minutes. Uh, we did pick up some fund balance. Some of that was non-recurring one-time money so that we can, we have to be careful how we use that. And then we did feel like we had some recurring increases that will help us and we've been able to bolster the salary reserve a little bit. Uh, but with that, I'm gonna turn it right over to Ms. Knust and we'll go through uh, a presentation that we feel is important just to remind people what the millage rates are and, uh, and this budget for the public that may be watching at home. Good evening. Um, much of this information was already presented as part of the tentative budget hearing, and so if there's any additional questions as we're going through, feel free to, to stop and, and ask. Um, so our property values did increase 5.4%, which was the same as they did in the prior fiscal year. The millage rate is 7.164 mills. Much of that millage rate is set by state law, um, so the board is limited in their authority in order to set the millage rate. That is an increase over the prior year, and the primary reason for that increase is the increase due to the referendum that was approved by the voters. That 7.164 mills is 13.67% greater than the rollback rate. The rollback rate is the rate that we would charge on the current new higher property tax values that would generate the same amount of money as we generated in the previous year. So what does this mean to an average homeowner? So an average homeowner with an assessed value of $225,000 who has homestead exemption will see an increase of $118.40 in their property taxes. So you can see our, our total budget is $3.5 billion, and that's comprised of all of um, uh, the general fund, special revenue, debt service, and also capital projects. We do expect to see some growth throughout the year in our special revenue funds as we will amend the budget as we receive those awards. So we did have an increase in our year-end fund balance of $24.6 million, which is about 1% of our district budget. And it is broken down into both recurring and non-recurring increases. Uh, so we had an increase of $6 million in what we call um, carryovers. Um, so those are state mandated categorical programs that were required to carry over to the schools um, that still had those funds remaining, as well as other set-asides like after school. Uh, we also had an increase um, in non-recurring revenue as a result of Hurricane Irma. We received uh, federal reimbursements totaling $6 million for expenditures that were incurred um, during that prior fiscal year. We do expect to get some additional <coughs> revenue from FEMA, but we don't have, we, I can't say that we're going to receive it this year, um, but still that's considered non-recurring revenue. So we took that $6 million in the carryovers, that goes back into the carryover programs where it was generated. Um, we also took the $6 million in that non-recurring revenue um, from those, uh, the federal reimbursements, as well as some other non-recurring revenue from higher than expected um, interest income, as well as over collection of revenues. And we set that aside $8.3 million to cover additional contracts to make sure that we're complying with the state mandate when, when it comes to security. Um, of the remaining amount that's considered recurring, we have 7.6 million that we were able to add to the district salary reserve to increase that to 25 million total. And we set aside 2.7 million uh, because we are seeing additional growth within um, charter schools. So we were able to uh, balance the budget. Our projected growth is about 750 um, unweighted FTE by the De Florida Department of Education. As of today, uh, we are close to that number. We're not yet at the projected growth, but we do expect to exceed the projected growth um, through October and also February, and we'll continue to monitor that throughout the year. We're able to increase the salary reserve, like I said, to $25 million. And as a result of the referendum, we were able to add $150 million in teacher re recruitment and retention supplements, as well as investments in security initiatives and mental health initiatives. So we're already starting to look ahead to FY21. Your first budget workshop is gonna be in December. 
And looking out to tentative and final budget adoption, uh, tentative adoption will be in July, July 29th, and final budget adoption subject to your calendar is September 9th. Okay, thanks, Ms. Knews. Uh, we will be, uh, you know, we've still got some bargaining to do. We mentioned the salary reserve at 25 million. Uh, we're still at the table with SEIU from last year, from FY19, so we have to work towards the settlement. It would come from that same reserve, and then we'll be at the table with our other groups working on the FY20 negotiations. I do, uh, I think we'll have some work to do as far as uh, educating the public on our budget and what we really got out of the state. Our state increases for several years have hovered in the 1% range. And we have been, we, for the last four years, we've been able to get to about a 3% raise. And that took really local initiative <laughs> and things to find efficiencies and take advantage of, of savings where we could. And basically, we've played some of those cards over the last four years. So I just don't want anybody to think it's going to be easier this year. It's, it's not. Uh, the, the really positive news is around the referendum. Uh, but we had a spending plan for that referendum. And we've put that money to work. And we're, we're paying our teachers the retention supplements. And we've tripled the, the budget for our school police and security. And we have now mental health professionals in our school. So um, I just want to be care manage expectations. Uh, we're still in Florida. We're still 45th in the country. <laughs> and uh, we're not rolling in money. Uh, but with that said, you've got two agenda items in front of you tonight. Uh, they each have to be voted on separately. And I'll turn it back to the superintendent uh, for those recommendations. Yes, sir. Thank you, 